The film begins in 1945, near the end of World War II, when a plane encounters a malfunction and has to land. So Koichi Shikishima the pilot landed his plane on Odo Island. Upon arriving on Odo Island, he approaches a senior mechanic Sosaku Tachibana and instructs him to fix the plane. After thoroughly inspecting the plane, Sosaku reports, We've scoured your rig from top to bottom and cannot find anything wrong. Upon hearing this, Koichi asks in a sharp tone, What are you implying? And leaves in anger. Then at night, an emergency alarm goes off, startling the entire team. They see Godzilla in front of them moving towards them. Upon seeing it, terror gripped the team as they stared at the monstrous creature. They turned and ran in panic, not understanding what was happening. They hastily took cover in a bunker and pointed their guns toward Godzilla. So Sosaku suggests that they can use their machine gun to kill him. He urges Koichi to do it. And Koichi sneaks into the cockpit and seizes the weapon. But when he gets close to Godzilla, he froze in fear and unable to fire a single bullet. Because of this, the other soldiers began shooting at Godzilla with their smaller guns, angering the beast. Godzilla moves forward in anger and crushing them like ants. Suddenly, seeing Godzilla approaching, Koichi gets out off the plane. Just then, Godzilla grabs the plane in his teeth and hurls it to the ground where it explodes. The blast knocks Koichi unconscious. When Koichi woke up in the morning, he saw the horrific scene of his team's massacre. Their corpses were scattered on the ground. And Sosaku, who had miraculously survived Godzilla's attack, was collecting the dead bodies. As soon as he sees Koichi, he angrily blamed him for the tragedy. Overcome with grief and guilt, Koichi could only mourn his lost comrades. Later, he and the other surviving soldiers were sent back to Tokyo. When Koichi came home, he discovered that everything was ruined by the bombing in Tokyo. Then, he met his neighbor Sumiko Ota there, who was crying as she told him that her son had been killed in bombing. Koichi asked if his parents were alive, but Sumiko said no. Everyone was killed in bombing. She walked ahead in sadness, lamenting their bad luck. As Koichi went on, he saw the police chasing a woman named Noriko Oishi holding a baby. Noriko ran into Koichi and handed over the baby to him before running away. A little further on street, he again see Noriko. So Koichi handed over the baby to him and continued on his way. But Noriko followed him and begged her not to abandon them. Later at night, they arrived at Koichi's house. There, Noriko confessed that she was alone in this world. And she also revealed that the baby's mother had handed baby over to him. She had asked her to look after baby if anything happened to her. Hearing this, Koichi was touched by her story. So, Koichi asked for the name of the girl, and Noriko revealed that the girl's name was Akiko. So they began to live together as a family. Things continued like this for a year. And one day, Koichi tells Noriko that he has received a letter offering him a government job. He explains that he has to go on a mission to locate and disarm underwater mines that had been planted on the ocean floor by the American and Japanese militaries during World War II. Upon hearing this, Noriko expresses her concern that this job sounds very risky. Koichi admits that it is, but he says that it will pay them well. He says that they can use the money to improve their lives and be happy. He says that this is very important for the Akiko. He assured Noriko nothing would happen to him since the government was providing advanced weapons and boats. The next day at work, Koichi discovered the government had deceived them providing only old weapons and boats rather than full details. There, Koichi met the former naval engineer Kenji Noda and rest of the minesweeper crew. Noda was in charge of the entire mission and gave him a briefing on the boat. While exploring the ocean, minesweeper crew member Seiji Akitsu attempted to locate and target some underwater mines. He fired several shots but missed each time. After seeing Akitsu's shooting, Koichi said, May I give it a try? When Koichi took aim, he easily destroyed the mine. Noda was impressed by his skill. As time goes by, Koichi and his minesweeper crew successfully dispose of many underwater mines. And Koichi lived happily with Noriko and Akiko, and they built their own house where Koichi brought his whole minesweeper crew. Noriko made food for everyone, and they praised the tasty food, calling her sister-in-law. Hearing this, Noriko clarified that she was not Koichi's wife. So Koichi explained that Noriko was living with him after the Tokyo bombing because she had no one else. And he also said that Akiko was not their baby girl. 
The next day when Koichi comes home from work, Noriko tells him that she got a desk job in Ginza, and soon I will be independent. When Koichi hears this, he asks, How will you manage Akiko's care while you are at your job? To which Noriko replies, Sumiko has agreed to take care of her. Meanwhile, when the Minesweeper crew surveyed the area and ocean, they came across a destroyed ship that had clearly been attacked by Godzilla. Seeing the extensive damage, the Minesweeper crew was shocked. They wondered what sort of massive creature could have done this. Koichi then explained that this was the work of Godzilla. He pointed out the dead fish in the water as evidence. He explained that Godzilla killed sea life in its path and carcasses floating to the surface before it emerged. Koichi had witnessed this phenomenon previously on an Odo island. Suddenly, a lot of dead fish are scattered all over the ship. Seeing this, Koichi is terrified, and when he realized that Godzilla was approaching, he fearfully urged everyone to escape quickly. But suddenly, Godzilla emerged from the water behind their ship. They speed up their boat. Koichi and Noda quickly throw a large bomb into the water, which hits Godzilla. However, the bomb failed to harm Godzilla's impermeable body. So Godzilla lunged forward, opening his mouth menacingly, and the Minesweeper crew threw another bomb, but the detonator wire disconnected before it could explode. So Koichi climbs up to the deck and shot Godzilla in the mouth with a machine gun, causing an explosion and damages part of Godzilla's mouth. But Godzilla quickly regenerates and follows them, and Godzilla stood up to attack. But before Godzilla attacked the Minesweeper crew boat, the Japanese army ship arrived from the other side and launched attack on Godzilla. This enraged him and he dove under the ship and struck it. He began turning the whole ship upside down, but the Japanese army ship did not give up and kept firing at him repeatedly. This wounded Godzilla and he retreated into the water. From beneath the water, Godzilla unleashed an atomic heat ray attack that exploded the army ship. After destroying the army ship, Godzilla roared loudly and then returned to the water. Then we see Koichi, who was severely injured in the attack and lost his consciousness. After that, we see Koichi again in his house, where Noriko expresses concern upon seeing his injuries. Koichi blames himself, saying that because of a mistake he made in 1945 on Odo Island, all of his teams were killed. He had the chance to kill Godzilla with a machine gun, but became terrified and couldn't attack. And because of this, Godzilla killed his entire team on Odo Island. Upon hearing this, Noriko comforts him and tells him that fate is inevitable. Then Koichi responds that he is haunted by these memories and wishes he had died with his team on that Odo Island. So Noriko assures him that if he is still alive today, his life must have an important purpose. Meanwhile, Koichi was at home with Akiko. Suddenly, the emergency alarm went off. The radio announced that Godzilla had attacked city of Ginza. Hearing this, Koichi was very worried for Noriko, who had gone to the city of Ginza for work. In the city of Ginza, Godzilla rampaged through the streets and destroying everything in his path. Noriko was on a train, watched in terror as Godzilla approached and picked up the entire train in his jaws. He began crushing a train carriage in his mouth while Noriko was inside it, hanging in one spot. She then jumped into the water to save her life. After that, we again see Noriko was running away when Koichi joined her. They ran with the crowd of people, and Godzilla was following them. The army attacked Godzilla with tanks, angering him more. He emitted blue light from his back, and then he unleashed an atomic heat ray, triggering explosions that killed people and destroyed buildings. To save Koichi, Noriko pushed him out of harm's way and sacrificed herself to the destructive blast. When Koichi came out from the rubble, Koichi see the area and saw no signs of life, not even his friend Noriko. Overcome with grief at the death of his friend, Koichi broke down sobbing. Hearing Godzilla's approaching roar, Koichi's sadness turned to anger and a desire for revenge. He screamed defiantly at the monster. After coming home back, Koichi mourned and prayed for Noriko. Just then, Noda approached Koichi and informed him that the government had selected their minesweeper crew and other soldiers to stop Godzilla. He said he had a plan and took them to the location where they met with the other soldiers who were going to try to stop Godzilla. Air Tatsu Ohada, Captain Yukikaze, greeted them and revealed that Noda had devised a strategy to defeat Godzilla. The plan involves sinking Godzilla to a depth of 500 meters, where the pressure will crush it. To sink Godzilla, they will surround it with Freon tanks and rupture them, 
lowering the water's buoyancy. If that fails, they will inflate balloons under Godzilla to force it back up to the surface, killing it through explosive decompression. Ada agreed and said Godzilla had caused too much destruction. He said they had to stop him and unanimously approved the plans. Meanwhile, Noda told Koichi they needed a plane full of weapons to lure Godzilla to the right spot in the sea. He said he needed an excellent mechanic to build such a plane. So Koichi said he had a friend Sosaku who was a mechanic. He said he would find him and bring him. Koichi went to Sosaku's house looking for him. He found the mechanic there. He still blamed him for the death of their entire team in 1945 on Odo Island. Koichi said he was aware of that and said, but now I have a chance to rectify my mistake. Koichi said I need your help to kill Godzilla. We need you to prepare a plane so that we can help the government and army save millions of lives. Hearing this, Sosaku agreed and went with Koichi to the place where he had to prepare the plane. And so Sosaku started working to get the plane ready. Meanwhile, Noda also prepared many weapons and gas cylinders. In just a few days, the plane was ready, and the ship started moving forward at sea towards their destination, and Koichi boarded his plane and took off. To lure Godzilla, they used devices to emit sound waves in the water. Annoyed by the sounds, Godzilla emerged from the water and headed towards a city. Koichi flew over in a plane, passing very close to Godzilla to provoke him. Godzilla began following the plane, so Koichi led him back out to sea towards the main location. Seeing them approach, Noda excitedly told the ships to get ready. With Koichi and Godzilla moving steadily forward at sea, the ships closed in on Godzilla. The crew began throwing cylinders into the water, surrounding Godzilla's body as he focused on Koichi's plane. And the ship's crews activated the cylinders. The plan succeeds and drag down Godzilla to 1500 meters, but he does not die. So they began plan B. The balloons inflate, pushing Godzilla up to 800 meters but he does not give up. Breaking free, it readies to destroy the surrounding ships with its heat ray. Just then, Hoichi kept flying towards Godzilla in his plane. Missing his fallen comrade and Noriko, he sought revenge. He hits the plane into Godzilla's mouth and plane explode. Noda and everyone mourned Koichi's death, but when they spotted him gliding on a parachute nearby, they rejoiced and thanked God for his survival. And Koichi, descending from the parachute, witnessed Godzilla's headless body. It emitted blue light and disintegrated into fragments. The fragments plunged into the water. When Koichi returns to base, he is met with cheers from everyone for having defeated Godzilla. And in the meantime, he received a telegram from Samiko, so Koichi and Akiko rushed to the hospital and where they reunite with Noriko, who miraculously survived the destruction. At the same time, deep in the ocean, a chunk of Godzilla's scale that had fallen off begins to glow and morph into something new.